Hello, I'm Katrina M. Kraft, and you've just tuned into the Kraft More Cash podcast, where finance meets innovation and strategy becomes reality. With over two decades navigating the twists and turns of accounting, tax, and business strategy, I've had the incredible opportunity to work with startups and Fortune 500 companies alike, crafting pathways for businesses to grow and thrive. I've tailored my expertise to serve the unique needs of industries ranging from real estate to creators to marketing and beyond. I'm on a mission to equip individuals with the financial savvy they need to succeed. Through my Wealth Intelligence course, I'm all about breaking down complex concepts into actionable strategies for business owners. So buckle up and let's dive into the world of financial success, innovative strategies, and the stories that make us all want to keep pushing forward. I want to talk about just tax advisory services. Tax prep is just after the fact. Basically, you give me your information and I prepare your taxes. That's not helpful. We really want to do advising. We want to do some consulting with you to look at how you can grow your wealth. Okay, so when we look at the tax advisory services, when I talk about wealth building, you can deduct certain things in certain types of um, streams of income. So you need to be aware of that. But you have the tax deductions, then you need to understand your legal entity structure. So with real estate, you wanna hold it in a certain type of entity. I never recommend anyone holding a real estate property in a, in a C-Corp. So you need to understand that because if you hold in a C-Corp and sale, you could have detriment, detrimental consequences. So you really need to understand why it's important to do certain things and certain entity structures and how it benefits you for taxes. Also for retirement, we talk about having something for retirement because we don't know about social security. As a business owner, you get benefits from being into a retirement account. It's a tax deduction for you. So basically the IRS is paying you to prepare for your own retirement. You can have a deduction for uh, 25% of your income that you net. And it's a deduction on your business tax return. So how good is that, that the IRS is saying, yes, pay yourself for retirement, save it, and you get a deduction on your, on your tax return. So that's why I say that business ownership can be your friend when you look at tax deductions. Insurance, you also wanna look at insurance, like what's the best insurance to protect you? Because if you have a business where you have people coming in and out of your your space, you definitely need insurance coverage for that. But then you also may need uh, coverage for disability for yourself, or you may need coverage for if you are disabled, that your business keeps going. So some type of business interruption insurance. So there's a disability overhead insurance that if you cannot work, that insurance kicks in and it will continue to pay your employees, pay your expenses of your business, like all of your uh, fixed, fixed expenses that you have. So it may be for your rent, your utilities, um, I'm thinking your marketing, anything like that. If you have an insurance called disability overhead, it could help with any type of situation where you're disabled. So that's important to know. Also, there's different tax loopholes, like hiring your children. You know, hire your children, get that deduction, and then it teaches them about budgeting. So you wanna take them through the same process of how much money you bring it in, how much is coming out. So it's a great way to teach your kids about fiscal responsibility by uh, having them have a job, first of all, having them document their time, what they're doing, because you have to have those things in place in order to take the children's um, children as a deduction as an employee. But then you can use that money they have it in their account and then they start to learn how to pay for their own you know supplies their own things that they want to purchase um so that's a great way to use um, the loopholes um for tax benefit 
And then we talked about the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. That's the Employee Retention Credit, the SBA loan, which they have run out of money now. So uh, I think it was like last month they ran out of the SBA. But the Employee Retention Credit, you may still be able to get. PPP is gone. Um, but we still want to look at maybe you can go back a couple of years and they did have the ability to go back several years. And if you had losses in say 2020, you could go back and report those against gains you had in your business. So you could go back, say for instance, you had a loss in 2020 um, and then you had a gain in 2019 or 20,000, you can offset those losses from your 2020 and go back and get a check from the IRS because you had gains in 2018 and already paid taxes on it. So that's a lot of things people are not doing that you can get real money in your pocket right now. Niche specific strategies, again, I do work with mostly professional services, real estate and entertainment and uh, digital professionals um, that do course creations and content creation. And I really, I really, really cannot emphasize, work with someone that knows your niche. Just like Angela asked me, what's the successful business? It's going to depend on what your niche is, what those ratios are, and someone that really knows your niche and your industry should be able to help you create your goals. Like I don't work in construction. I don't work in restaurants. I have worked in one restaurant, but I prefer not to work in restaurants um, because that's a whole nother industry that you need to know how their cost of goods are, their ratios on what's good for, for food spoilage. All of those types of specific things are important. And that's why you should find an accountant that works in your niche. And then new tax policies. Uh, we're still waiting on the Biden new tax policy to get passed and see what's going to happen on there, but just keeping um, you know, in front of the policy so you can plan just in case it does get passed and you're able to pivot. So I'm already planning, like I know what's in the plan and we are already talking to our clients about, okay, if this passed, how are we going to pivot? So that's important to understand that those types of things. And that's all about tax strategies and advising. So there's 23 million plus businesses in the US that are not properly structured. So a lot of people are still solo entrepreneurs. They may be sole proprietors or they're single member LLCs. That may not be the proper structure for you, but I know that's the easiest. And I know a lot of times attorneys say LLC, but they don't tell you you can be taxed as a C Corp, a S Corp, a partnership or a sole proprietor when you get an LLC. And it may benefit you as far as tax related to be something else other than an LLC filing as a Schedule C. So that's important to really look at what's going to be best for you. Now, when we look at the tax journey, we just talk about the different things, what's going to trigger your tax. So you want to definitely search for, for answers for your questions. You're going to have your savings calculator your plans, you decide what you wanna do. We help you implement those strategies and you make sure you file quarterly your tax um, estimate. A lot of people don't know that you should, you should figure out how much you're gonna owe quarterly and pay in because the IRS is a pay as you go system. If you wait until when the tax is due on April 15th or March 15th, if you're a business to, to pay your taxes, the IRS penalizes you because you did not pay in quarterly as the pay-as-you-go system. So look at your tax return and make sure you have not been subject to estimated tax penalties because that's a pretty hefty penalty if you're not paying in. So just because you found an extension and just because you pay by April 15th, that does not clear you from estimated tax. Um, estimated tax. You need to make sure that you're looking at that and paying that in. So I wanna give an example of a client and this is using tax strategies. So 42 year old, she's 42 years old and we were able to save $18,000 in taxes in the first year and then going forward. So once we did the plan, she was able to save 18,000 the first year and then every year going forward. So that meant that she had $1,500 extra a month 
Now we talked about what do we need to do? Look at that um, nerd wallet um, and see if you were able to put in $1,500 more, more a month in savings, how would your account grow? So that's why I do like to add tax strategy into wealth building because when you do the proper strategy, it's gonna bring more money to you and put that in your pocket. So she was able to say that 1,500 more a month. So think about it, without increasing her income, she didn't do anything different, without reducing her expenses, she didn't grow her company, she didn't reduce her lifestyle, but just from a tax plan. Uh, I have done a tax plan that saves a person $160,000 in one year. Um, so that company was about a $4 million company. But the thing about the tax plan was there was so much that was available to that client that could be done. And I feel that a lot of people are missing deductions. I, I know that they are because majority of business owners are overpaying their taxes. They're not doing tax planning. They are just going to their CPA or their tax preparer and giving them data. That's after the fact. There's no planning. That's not proactive. So you're really losing money and you're losing wealth by not doing that, doing a plan. If you bought uh, a real estate property and it tripled, that's increased wealth. So I'm looking at something that's just giving you 6% and gaining that much money. But if you had another investment that could give you more and yield more, then it could even be higher. So what we do, we helped that particular person structure their business to maximize tax. Because as I said, it depends on the structure. We took forms of asset protection. So asset protection could be your insurance we're looking at and the structure can provide asset protection. We're looking at the incorporation and we're making a plan for savings, investment and growing the wealth. And I want everyone to make sure they're keeping an eye on your net worth, your personal income statement. I also want you to look at your debt and then look at your, your assets. Like what are your assets? Also, when we start looking at your business, you want to look at some important numbers again, your cash sales, your expenses, your checking account, 25 to 40% of your monthly profits. So we want to just look at what's happening. You need to know your ratios, what's important in your industry. There are software tools that accountants use where we have benchmarks, um, benchmarks to show what is a great number and um, ratios that certain industries should have. So if I was looking at a dentist, I would know how much is good for profitability for that dentist. Like how much does the average dentist spend on payroll, on rent, on marketing. So those are the type of numbers. They're called benchmarking numbers. You need to ask your accountant about. So really want to just keep an eye on your finances, um, those particular numbers that I gave you, plus your business numbers. The same thing, how much operating income, how much in expenses, and then you want to know your assets. So as business owners, you may have assets as well. Your equipment, your furniture and fixtures in your office, you may have a car in your business because you have business use. That's also an asset. So I want to give you a couple of uh, tips because I have eight tips in my program um, that I ask everyone to track, but I want to give you a, a couple of the tips. Now, one of them would be set up a tax checking account. We talked about that you may have quarterly expenses. So I suggest setting up a separate account just for tax. So you set aside money for tax and you're staying current with those payments. That's the first tip. And my tip number six of the eight that I have is have business and personal saving goals. So you really need to develop your goals so you can create the wealth you want. If you don't even know what you want and you don't have the goals, how are you going to accomplish that? So that is another important thing. You have your business and your personal and some of the tools that I gave you and tips of numbers to track are going to help you stay on track of achieving those goals. Now, when we talk about the deductions and the goals, some of the things that you do want to look at is your home office, expense, travel, meals, hiring children and grandparents. So these are some of the deductions that you would take in your business that can help you get more money in your pocket. You know, instead of paying out to the IRS, use these deductions so that you can keep more of that money in your pocket and then grow your wealth and invest. 
So home office, travel, meals. Right now, meals 100% deductible if you buy them for a restaurant. It's due to COVID and the restaurants uh, being impacted. The IRS is allowing 100%. It was last year and this year if you buy from a restaurant. Hiring your children and your grandparents or your grandparents can work or your parents can work uh, with you. That could be a deduction. So if you are supporting somebody that's, that's in your family, see if there is something they can do, you can do um, to hire them. They may be a consultant that helps you. They could be on your advisory board. So that's a way that now you can deduct the, the money that you're paying them and they're working instead of just supporting and not having a deduction for them. Maximize your depreciation. We talk about depreciation for the rental property, but also depreciation for your uh, equipment that you buy in your company. That could be depreciated. Healthcare strategies. We talk about fringe benefit strategies, accountable plans, uh, medical reimbursements, and home administrative office. So a lot of these deductions you can do in your business. You just need to be aware and plan ahead for it. Legal entity, we talked about that, like the sole proprietor partnership, C-Corp, S-Corp, multi, you can have multi-consideration, you can have family office. That means that you have a business and your whole family is in that business and it's gonna pass on to the next generation. There's great strategies reg regarding having family office. So we do talk about the legal entity review. That's a great way to build wealth. We're talking about, if you look at the Vanderbilts, you know, they pass this money from one family member to another, and then they have it in a, a shared kind of company format. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about true wealth and building that type of wealth. And that can be done in family offices. Retirement review. So we definitely want to look at your retirement. All of these type of retirement plans you can do in your business. We just have to look to see which one is best for you, which one is going to maximize your deduction. And then that scale again, where you look at, okay, if I put back you know, $80,000 a year, how much will that impact my life for savings? Asset protection uh, consideration. So 50 state credit protection exemptions. So this is just a lot of information on what I look at. Um, there's 50 different state credit protection exemptions like homestead. In Texas, we have homesteads. Some states like California, their property is not 100% exempt. So if somebody were to sue them, you could get to a person's house. We're in Texas and Florida. We're hundred percent. That's kind of why uh, OJ Simpson's, his house was protected. He had houses in Florida and they couldn't get to get to his home. So you need to know those rules about homestead exemption and what that means. Your life insurance policies, your Roth, all of this is a part of your wealth plan, because what are you going to leave to your estate and your family and your legacy? You actually need to understand all of these types of um, tools and investment protection ways so that you are protected and how you want to leave your money to your family is protected. So that could be going into not a will, but an estate because an estate is going to protect how it's allocated. A will may have to go through probate and they could charge at least 6% of your assets just to the courts and it may not go to who you want it to go to so that's why it is important at a certain level to have uh, asset protection as a part of your wealth strategy as well quarterly estimated payments we talked about that why it's important to do your quarterly and look at your numbers not only so you can do your payments but it gives you an idea to where you are and what you need to improve on each quarter so these are some of the structures that I've utilized. So it's just, you know, we got the asset protection, we have an international um, corporation here, planning schematic series LLCs, which I've just read some new information about series LLCs and they government changed the rules. So now it's not as beneficial as it used to be. So just staying on top of those things are very important um, to understand. I've, Going over a lot of information. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. Um, there's a lot of things to do. I know even for me, um, my estate plan, I need to complete mine. I've started it. So I know that this is a lot. I, I know that we're starting at different points, but the good news is it's never too late. As you gain more information, you can do more. So I just really wanna encourage you to really just start today 
um, start with some of the, the basics that we've gone over. And if you are interested in other options, we have two options. The first, you can learn to grow your wealth and develop financial intelligence by joining. It's a six week wealth intelligence program. So it's six modules and every week you have homework, you have things that you need to go over and you have a Q and A with me every week. And you're gonna develop your net worth. You're gonna have budgeting. You're gonna look at QuickBooks. We're gonna look at your KPIs. Like, what do you need to track? We're gonna make sure that we have a plan that you wanted. And then by the end of that six weeks, you're probably gonna adjust that plan because you're gonna feel so strong and feel like now you have the wealth intelligence to make different choices. Um, so this six week course is one way to work with us. The second option is a little higher investment, but in exchange, we work directly with you to grow your wealth over a period of a year or longer. So that's the plan where I'm actually looking at your situation, developing, okay, you need an LLC, you need an S Corp. I'm gonna look at your tax deductions. Okay, where are you missing? We may need to go back three years. So my investment, what I'm saying is an investment could really be money in your pocket because I'm gonna save you money Plus, we may go back some years and get you some money because you have losses in some years and gains in others. Um, so that's the second option is the direct working with us through the tax advisory services. So that's the tax advisory services, what you get, um, help you keep your documents in place, your quarterly payments, tax deductions. And what I can say is that the tax deductions that you receive will always be more than what you're paying as the, as the investment and the services. It's just always worked out like that because if I can't help you, I'm gonna tell you, you're not in a situation where I can help you at this point. So maybe you need the, the wealth intelligence course first to build more. So I'm gonna be honest with you and say, yes, I can help you or no, I can't. And so it's always where you're gonna have more in your pocket from working with us than you've spent out. So my pledge to you is I'm not going to throw fancy accounting words when we're going through the wealth. I really want to get down and make it simple and make it so you understand and you are excited about working the lesson. Uh, it's, you know, I don't say I want to dumb down, but I don't want it to be confusing. You know, I know that I am an accountant and I may throw out some terms and you're like, um, I'm not familiar with that. Well, that's why I'm here for Q&A and I want you to understand. So let me know because I don't know if it's a word or if it's a term that's not familiar like layman terms because I'm just so used to being in that world of accounting and talking that, that language. So no question is ever something that you shouldn't uh, uh, ask because I really like to help and really want to make sure everyone is living the dream and growing the wealth that they uh, desire. So I just ask you at this time, are you ready? Are you ready for the growth? If so, um, you can just follow me on Instagram. I'm always giving information about that. I have a YouTube channel that's at Katrina M. Craft as well that I, I have shorts twice a week. And they just talk about different topics, wealth, tax, real estate, uh, crypto, and then uh, Instagram, the same, just I have different uh, posts that talk about wealth and business. And then if you're interested in the wealth intelligence program, even if it's not now, if you think you may be interested in, in it later, just email me at hello at Katrina M. Craft and in the subject put wealth intelligence. And I would love to just go on this journey with you. Thank you. That's all I have. If I have any questions, I would love to engage with anyone that's on. Well, you had one participant um, to say that she's ready. Okay. I'm, sure. I'm assuming she can reach out to you via your um, hello at Katrina Craft, or is that another email that she should? No, the hello at Katrina M. Craft. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much.